Hi, today is October 20th. It is a beautiful day. It's always a beautiful day. I choose to have a great day, no matter what happens and no matter what it looks like outside. And I want to invite you to walk through the Bible with me and find the answers to these questions. Who am I? Who is God? And what the heck are we doing together? What is our relationship? And we're referring to Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 1, through chapter 36, verse 32, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 1 through 25, Psalm 89, verses 14 through 37, Proverbs chapter 25, verses 25 through 27. And I want to honor my granddaughter, Kaylee, who loved me by uh, making this, this, uh, this blanket that I'm sitting on that's covering my chair in our studio. And I, it's a, a lot of work to hand. Um, I don't even know what it is. It seems to be braided, but it's a very, very comfortable place to be. It's kind of like getting a hug from an unseen, unseen God. And, you know, from my granddaughter, I just want to honor her today. I really, 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 really am thinking and really thinking about core values, the three core values. The video will be in the description that started me thinking about having three core values and a team. And I wondered, what three core values does God want on his team? What three core values does he carry in his character and his personality? And I've just been really uh, thinking deeply about that. And changing my mind several times as I ask other people what they think. And I want to ask you what you think. I know love. Everybody that I've asked, number one, love, kindness. So loving kindness describes his number one characteristic and core value is loving kindness. You can say that you love someone and not be kind. I don't think that it really is truly love if you're not kind because love is patient and love is kind. But, and you can be kind without loving. And I really, you know, kind of, I like people being kind, but I, but love will cover it all. Love will be love and kindness. And it really en encompasses so much more than just being kind to somebody. I want to remind you that you have identity. You were created in God's image and you have value. Jesus Christ died for you. As we look into the Old Testament, Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 1, chapter 36, and verse 32, we are looking at a family. God told Jeremiah to go get the, the family of the uh, Rechabites, and he said, bring them to the temple. And Jeremiah was instructed to tempt them with wine. And when Jeremiah offered them wine in the temple, they said, no, I'm sorry. We don't drink wine because our ancestor gave us this command. You and your descendants must never drink wine and do not build houses. If you follow these commands, you will live long, good lives in the land. So there was a promise. If you do this, then this will happen. And God said, look at this family who has obeyed their ancestors but you have not obeyed me, your creator and your God. Turn from your wicked ways. You've refused to listen to me because you refuse to listen or answer when I call. I will send upon Judah and Jerusalem all the disasters I have threatened. And he describes himself as the Lord, God of heaven's armies. And that is in verse 17 of chapter 35. In chapter 36, get a scroll and write down all my messages against Israel, Judah, and the other nations. God is telling Jeremiah to write it down. If you have a prophetic dream or a prophetic thought, write it down. It may not be for today, but it is going to happen. Perhaps the people of Judah will repent when they hear again all the terrible things I have planned for them. Then I will be able to forgive their sins and wrongdoings. And then verse 6, so go to the temple on the next day of fasting and read the messages from the Lord that I have had you write on this scroll. Now Jeremiah is talking to his scribe Baruch. And 
perhaps they will they will hear perhaps they will hear it is so important for people to hear what the lord has to say and then he said for the lord jeremiah said for the lord has threatened them with his terrible anger and i can just see god's heart it's like a mama's heart it's saying you know please don't don't make me do this don't make me do this i have to do this if you don't turn and repent from your wicked way and they're just like again talk to the hand they're not paying attention so god has got to he's got to follow through with his promise of discipline what happened was the the people listened to everything that jeremiah had prophesied and they were quite concerned and so they told the king about what happened the king in verse 21 sent them to get the scroll and when they brought it and read it to the king it was late autumn and the king was in a winterized part of the palace sitting in front of a fire to keep warm each time jehudai finished reading three or four columns now if you can picture it they didn't have pages of, in a book like we do but they had a long scroll that had you know wooden wooden um dowels on each side and they would roll 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 and we read from left to right but they read from right to left and they're reading over here and as they're reading a f you know three or four columns the king took his knife and slashed it and threw it into the fire and then they would read again the king would slash it throw it into the fire until the whole scroll the whole prophecy was burned in the fire so again Je uh, the king was saying talk to the hand i'm not listening you can't make me change my mind and i have so much disrespect for what you're saying i'm going to throw it away it's not even like i'm going to ignore it i'm going to destroy what you wrote and you can imagine god wasn't very happy with that and so the lord says he will have no heirs to sit on the throne of david his dead body will be thrown out to lie unburied exposed to the heat of the day and the frost of the night i will punish him and his family and his attendants for their sins and he said i promised for they would not listen to my warnings and then after this persecution jeremiah was told to uh, write so much more jeremiah took another scroll and dictated again to his secretary baruch he wrote everything that had been on the scroll king jehoiakim had burned in the fire only this time he added much more wow you know let's just take a minute and ask the lord to help us to hear his voice pay attention i know there are things in my life and there probably are things in your life that you've heard god speak uh, yet maybe you didn't believe or you didn't have the courage or you just didn't want to and you've ignored his voice and i just want to pray in the name of jesus that we not only hear his voice but obey and it's going to turn out so much better for us in the end uh, it may be difficult in the beginning but it's always good because our god is good and what he tells us to do is good it's good for us Let's go over to the New Testament, 1 Timothy chapter 5, 1 through 25. And the chapter is an amazing chapter to read and study. I, I encourage you to read it for yourself. Uh, it's mostly how to treat older people, widows, take care of the widows. I really appreciate my brother who has taken um, my mother. And there is a place in his house where she can live independently and he is loving on her and taking care of her. And I, I shout out to my older brother. Uh, I'm older than him, but he's the oldest brother that I have uh, in, in the family that I grew up with, Andy, uh, Pastor Andrew. And I just want to, to shout out and honor him today. He's always taking care of his parents. And not that everyone else hasn't, but he's done, 
he's done an amazing job. And it says that when you repay your parents by taking care of them, this is something that pleases God. When you honor your parents, there's so many rewards. And John Bevere has done a study, Honors Rewards, and we've studied it before, but we have to be we, we have to be reminded. We honor their memory. We honor them even as they are alive. And it doesn't really matter what our thoughts are about them. Honoring them is what pleases the Lord and pleases God. And we are uh, spiritually dead if we only live for pleasure. That's in verse 6. The widow who lives only for pleasure is spiritually dead even while she lives. And then, you know, he's giving instructions on other relationships. Those who sin should be reprimanded in front of the whole church. Now, wouldn't that be a paradigm shift if we started doing what God says in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 20? Those who sin should be reprimanded in front of the whole church. This will serve as a strong warning to others. Wow. You know, why do we not do that? Well, we'll be, offend, we'll be offending people. It doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. I love that. that. That's my favorite. It doesn't work. God didn't know what he was talking about when he said, those who sin should be reprimanded in front of the whole church. This will serve as a strong warning to others. And it reminds me of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. There is a, a place where fear of discipline, fear of punishment, fear of the consequence of my decision will stir me to good works, provoke me to good works. And again, the Lord, please help us. We need you. We need your spirit. We need your Holy Spirit, not just to tell us, but to give us the grace to do what you tell us. Remember the sins of some people are obvious, leading them to certain judgment. But there are others whose sins will not be revealed until later. In the same way, the good deeds of some people are obvious and the good deeds done in secret will someday come to light. Humility. Humility will take a rebuke even in front of a church and uh, accept the responsibility for sin and for mistakes. And humility will also be able to do good works in secret and not share any kind of limelight and be recognized. It's not about me when you're walking in humility. So much in Psalm chapter 89 verses 14 through 37. There's so much about God, his characteristics and values. He's righteous. He's justice. He's just. He carries justice loving kindness and truth. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. He's sitting on righteousness and justice. And that kind of uh, defends the, uh, the idea that just is one of his core values. Unfailing love or loving kindness and truth walk before you as attendants. So he's, he's circled with righteousness, justice, unfailing love, or loving kindness and truth. And happy are those who hear the joyful call to worship, for they walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice all day long in your wonderful reputation. You are their glorious straight. It pleases you to make us strong. Let me say that again. It pleases God to make us strong. Our protection comes from the Lord. And he, the Holy One of Israel, has given us our king. And then he talks about Jesus. The Proverbs, it's not good to eat too much honey. And it's not good to seek honors for yourself. Walk in humility and be blessed by God. You humble yourself and God will exalt you. I want you to share these videos so God's word may be heard. And have an absolutely blessed, blessed day.